Hi everyone, welcome back to Babylon Irons. It's myself and Sloth today. And we're going to be talking about the interest or persistent interest in <clears throat> the colossal Nigerian centre forward, Victor Boniface. Uh, Sloth, this is a player both me and you have, have liked, coveted for a while. Um, and we'll get into our feelings on the overall uh, kind of link soon. But just to kind of talk us through. So, the, yeah, uh, it's come out again. A uh, player that we looked at uh, around about in January um the uh, of the last season has come back around this summer he is a player on our short list of summer targets rumored to be around 47 million euros for the new uh bundesliga i believe he ends up being bundesliga top goal scorer as well as yeah, being so then rookie of the year yeah and also being the, the a bundesliga winner for Bayer leverkusen going completely unbeaten throughout the season which is unprecedented in the first time it's ever happened in the bundesliga so sloth before we get into our thoughts on on the transfer, what are your feelings on Boniface, uh, and why do you like him so much? I think he's he is the epitome of a modern day forward in, in the sense that he's not just a good <coughs> finisher; his his overall play is is so good. He can he links up well with others. He's athletic enough to be able to stretch the defence. He can cause problems physically and in the air, but he creates chances for other people. And it's so good. When you when you can see Boniface in full flow, because he, he has had a couple of injury problems this season, um, and Leverkusen haven't, haven't had him for the full season, which is a testament to, to what they've done, if anything. Um, but... I just I think he's a fantastic footballer and and one that would add massively to West Ham up top. Yeah, I completely agree. And this was a player that last summer we did a scout report on him. Uh whilst he was still in Belgium, we you know kind of stated that he was around for about fifteen to twenty five million euros. I believe he went for about twenty million euros as well at the time. We both said it, it would be an incredible deal for us to get. Yes, he had uh, his injury problems at that point. I think he'd done his ACL on both. Done his both, knees. yep. yep. Uh, during his time. So, again, it was <laughs> the slight concern. It being a West, West Ham fan, have, you know, knowing a player has done that before. But he'd come back so strong uh, from from the injury and seemed to kind of put that to bed. Obviously, the injury he picked up this year wasn't to do with that. I think it was a pectoral problem, if memory serves me right. Uh, so... <laughs> It was a player that for 20 million euros, bearing in mind we sold Scamacca for 25 million euros and went on to have a phenomenal end of the season at Atalanta and is now going to be playing Champions League football after lifting Europa League uh, Cup. Against Boniface Leverkusen. Yeah, against Boniface as well. It, it feels this was a deal we should have gone for last year in light of getting rid of uh, obviously Scamacca it seems a, man, a a player that would have fit very much within what David Moyes likes in centre forward, a younger version of Antonio, uh, with with more uh, I would say ice in his veins when it comes to being in front of goal. And at twenty million euros, an absolute snip, especially when you look at now the quotes of forty seven million euros. It's quite a, a leap <clears throat> and and rightly so for labor because as you say one rookie of the year this season for uh <clears throat> for by leverkusen so prior to his injury he had an incredible year he scored 23 he played 23 games this year and scored 14 goals and eight assists and that's in only 1500 minutes of football that's staggering he was expected to score kind of uh 15 so it, he was down slightly if you look in the kind of XG. But then also you look at Europa League, played eight games, scored five goals, and he only played 379 minutes worth of football in Europa League. That, that it's, in itself is nuts to think. You know, for 300, just a little under 400 minutes to be putting the ball in the back of the net. Sorry, five times, sorry, not eight times. <clears throat> five times and to be creating two more. It's, it's the sort of it's the sort of numbers that you know Harland or, or that level of striker is is 
getting at the moment and putting up. And I think when you look at um, how we miss out on players like this, it, it's one of the very few criticisms, or I say one of the few, one of the criticisms, main criticisms I can give David Moyes and, and the fact that, yes, we wanted Dominic Solanke in the summer, but we should have known full well that getting in Prem proven striker is never going to be cheap, but it's also going to be a case of you need to have alternative options. And look, I'm not saying he would have come to the Premier League and been a smash hit. He may well have done his cruciate, like <laughs> as would be the most West Ham thing imaginable, but he could well have come in, absolutely smashed it for us. Or even if he didn't, just given us goals off the bench, given us something different and something that could be relied on as opposed to sandwiching someone like Danny Ings into the side. And I think for 20 million euros, this is where we really need to change our approach as a football club. And we're kind of, I'm kind of going off what Boniface is about here and, and, and more kind of focusing on West Ham. So I'll caveat back to him. But it's it's things like his speed, his physical power, um, his ability in the air as well, that we really need to try and, and focus on. His work rate, that's something that's really, um, you know, not spoken about enough. He presses and he leads from the front and it creates chances for those wing backs that Leverkusen have. Like if he's pressing a striker and... and so if he's pressing as the striker and they're playing it out wide, then those wing backs are on them. Uh, they're on the opposition's defenders like that. And so it is incredibly frustrating. It's where someone like Acor Adams could have really suited the system. And yes, he's had a very quiet end to this, but it's we speak so often about how strikers suit systems. And they're both examples of, of how players can do that, thrive in certain systems and then stutter in another. Mateta is a fantastic example of that. And he's another one who, who, you know, has all the attributes to suit a system, has had a very dry spell and is suddenly scoring. But I think Boniface is just, it is a case of we've missed this, this ship. It's, it's, it's gone. And you can bet your bottom dollar that if we did end up signing him for 47 million euros, Leverkusen would just go out and get the next player who, who's going to give them 15 goals and five, 10 assists. They're going to go out and find the next player who can do that for them. And it's the same with when we gave Frankfurt all that money for, for Sebastian Allaire. They went out and they spent that money so well and you look at where they are now. Oh, yeah. you really, really liked for free as well, which yeah. really rankled both of us. <laughs> but, but you know, you, you look at um, you look at what they've gone on to do, and and yeah, they've fallen off the pace slightly. But they've got a Europa League. Uh, you, you know, they've got a Europa League trophy in their cabinet. They don't care. They're they're, they're challenging for spots regularly now, and you know they they. The club need to have this mindset, and hopefully, with with Steitman and Lopetegui's um, insight, it's something that's going to change. Because if there's one thing we know from his time um, at Madrid, it's that uh, Lopetegui has an eye for a striker because he is the man responsible for bringing Gonzalo Higuain over to to Europe. So it's it's um, something that I think. While I don't think this is the move for us, um, I'm hoping we will address and look for a similar style player. Yeah, no, absolutely. And when you look at, obviously, when you look at statistics, they are they can paint a picture um, of a player, but it also paints a picture of the style he played. And and one thing that we've constantly criticised is that that lack of ability to carry. So the attributes that Boniface have is the attributes that we need to look for in a, in a centre forward in the fact that when we talk about Boniface this year as a progressive carrier, so essentially carrying the ball over, I believe it's uh, 10 to 20 yards and essentially progressing play towards goal and being in certain, certain positions of pitches. 
he would do that. You know, two point eight one per ninety. You know, that put it down progressive carries ninety two times over the course of the season, which sounds sorry puts him in the top ninety two percentile for centre forwards. Always successful in his take ons, very much largely very successful, and the reason being because he's such a physical presence. Again, as you said, great kind of pace as well. His link play was great. His link play very much like with Skamaka in the sense of the ball would stick. You can play it into him. You can make it stick. He can play players in uh, either when he's back to goal or turning around and kind of dropping what he did a lot with by Leverkusen. And that's kind of what you want. We He is very much the modern centre forward. Uh, and I think there, was, there has been comparisons and even in some cases, prior to his injury, people are even starting to say, is he a better Nigerian centre forward than then Osman, who has been obviously incredible for Napoli and been arguably one of the best centre forwards in Europe for the past couple of seasons, really, uh, with a price tag to match. And I do feel again, like like you said, we missed the boat in not going for Boniface this year. Uh, it, sorry, last year. Sorry, last year was, was the time to go. And I think that's something that we have lacked. And to, to your point, we we had this fixation on a player in Solanke. I say we, uh, I don't believe collectively there was a fixation. I think there was a, a collective of one who had a fixation on on a player and then doesn't really like to then entertain the idea that we should be looking at alternatives. And also nonchalantly went with an idea that having a smaller squad and less options was actually a smart idea in a season where you're playing nearly 50, 60 games in a year. Um, that's a little bit of a digression, but it, again, it's to the point of we need to be much smarter. Yeah. And whilst I feel Boniface is probably the, the, the dream move, I think without us you know, looking to be able to sell, obviously it's not likely to happen now. Paqueta, going for a, a signing that's going to cost us that much money is going to be possible. But I, I do think what it does, though, it does give us the, I guess, the, the frame uh, of, of a player that we need and highlights the, the types of, dynamics that we need we need someone who's can carry someone who can link play as you say is very good from a defensive point of view last in his season in belgium his defensive contribution wasn't great however at leverkusen he shows that he's actually quite malleable and can play in all these different styles because they do play in quite a varied way leverkusen which is why they've been so good they've been able to the way they can change in game tactically um I think it's it's a, a case of if we're now looking for a player who is forty million pounds, we need to look elsewhere. And and I, and I think someone like Evan Nielsen at Porto, I think if you, I know he's got a buyout clause that I think is about sixty five million euros. But I think if you offered Porto forty million pounds and a potential sell on clause, I think they would probably take it given the FFP mm -hmm. uh, targets they're under. Um, it's another player we've talked about for extensively, me and you, as a, as a player we should be looking at. And I, I think that we now need to sort of change change our mindset on signings. And, yeah, look, as much as I like Boniface, his injury record and I think the, the overall finances of this deal, if, if you're going to try and take a player who's now got champions league mm -hmm. has the chance to defend a title in the bundesliga and take them to the premier league it's one thing if you're liverpool or or man city but for a team chasing europe you're gonna have to massively increase his wages and you're gonna have to give him a big signing on bonus and i just think that it's a case of probably far too much money more money than sense this deal would be i think and you're arguably truly and utterly nailing your colours to the mast and saying that you are going to be the centre forward for, for years to come. I don't think it gives you any flexibility in that, that respect because how much it's going to have to cost you in which to bring them in, um, which arguably is the reason why you would be bringing in a Boniface. However, had we done that last year, it would have given us that flexibility in which to, you know, not have to essentially say we're going to build around you. You are pretty much putting your flag in the ground uh with a signing of that kind of magnitude and i think it'd be the same if we went to sign solanke uh who at 27 going to be 28 uh, i think next year again at the price it would cost for a, for a club like west ham at this stage in our i guess our future 
progression is quite a statement when you look at the likes of Tony, Solanke and Boniface. They are huge financial commitments and ultimately you stating and, and putting a, a flag in the ground saying that this is the player that he's going to take you forward. So you are giving yourself no room or margin for error. And I think the problem with Boniface has said the injuries. So for me, I would say uh, as an overall transfer is something that's viable. I, I would probably say it's a three out of 10. You know, I, I, whilst I would love Boniface to come, I just don't, I think we've missed our chance. And that's the thing that we've got to, get better up is identifying the right time to buy the right times to sell i think boniface's uh window to buy him has been and gone so i'd say it's a it's a three out of ten as a as a genuine kind of opportunity what about yourself so i think it would have been a 10 out of 10 last summer had we brought him in for t- for 20 million euros i think that's that's how good of a player i think boniface is um and I, I look up when I'm saying about the price tag and me personally thinking it's not worth it. I think that that's purely from a West Ham perspective in terms of what it means to us, um, not in terms of how, how he would join us and increase the quality of the side. I think he's a fantastic footballer. But um, I, I would give this a four out of ten if it does happen. I've no doubt he'd come and he'd score double figures for us easily. Um, it's just an issue of whether he would be fit enough for the full season. And you can take a gamble on that at 20 million euros. You can't at 47 million. Yeah, absolutely. Totally agree. Um, but yeah, guys, let us know what you think. Do you think Boniface would be a fantastic signing? He's the type of player you want to see. Are there other targets you're interested in as opposed to Boniface? And kind of what, what is your expectations for a striker next year? Do they have to hit the same levels of Bowen in terms of goals? Or are you willing to kind of accept that there may be a bedding in period as we realign how we play under Lopetegui and as we kind of figure out how to fit in a new centre forward, Mo Kudus, Gerard Bowen, and potentially another signing uh, next year? So, yeah, guys, let us all know what you think. Please do like if you like the video. Please do share. And uh, one last thing to do, Sloth, and that is... Come on, you wines.